GDP per capita is a measure of a country's economic output in a given year, divided by the average or mid-year population for the same year. In this video, GDP per capita is converted to international dollars using purchasing power parity rates. An international dollar has the same purchasing power over GDP as the US dollar has in the United States. It took us almost 15 hours to make this video for you. Please like and subscribe. It will take you only 2 seconds. Economic history is a very simple story. It is a story that has only two parts. The first part is the very long time in which the average person was very poor and human societies achieved no economic growth to change this. Incomes remained almost unchanged over a period of several centuries when compared to the increase in incomes over the last two centuries. Almost all that ordinary people used and consumed in the 17th century would have been very familiar to people living a thousand or even a couple of thousand years earlier. Average incomes in England between the year 1270 and 1650 were 1,051 pounds when measured in today's prices. The second part is much shorter, it encompasses only the last few generations and is radically different from the first part, it is a time in which the income of the average person grew immensely from an average of £1,051 incomes per person per year, increased to over £30,000, a 29-fold increase in prosperity. This means an average person in the UK today has a higher income in two weeks than an average person in the past had in an entire year. This is the one transformation that changed everything. Before the modern era of economic growth, the economy worked very differently. Not technological progress, but the size of the population determined the standards of living. In the very long time in which humanity was trapped in the Malthusian economy, it was births and deaths that determined incomes. More births, lower incomes. More deaths, higher incomes. Here we have a very interesting example of the Malthusian economy from the past. If we see GDP per capita in England that early in the 14th century, there was a substantial spike in the level of incomes. Incomes increased by around a third in a period of just a few years. This is the effect that the plague, the Black Death, had on the incomes of the English. The plague killed almost half of the English population. The population declined from 8 million to 4.3 million in the three years after 1348. We even see it in the chart for the world population. But those that survived the epidemic were materially much better off afterward. The economy was a brutal zero-sum game and the death of your neighbor was to the benefit for those that did survive. This happened primarily because farmers now achieved a higher output. While farmers before the plague had to use agricultural land that was less suited for farming, after the population declined they could farm on the most productive areas of the island. The Industrial Revolution started in England in the 18th century and from there spread to other parts of the world. This Industrial Revolution ended the Malthusian economy and made it possible for a country to leave poverty behind. Throughout history there were several episodes in which certain economies achieved economic growth, but in contrast to the sustained growth since the Industrial Revolution, these episodes were all short-lived. What is new about modern times is that the growth of incomes lasted for a very long time, until today, and that this growth did not only increase the incomes in one economy but instead spread to other economies as well. The origin of this transformation is northwestern Europe. It was in England, and Holland, in the early 17th century where it became the first possible to grow incomes over a sustained period of time. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.